elevated isolation of southern Spain increases the ground temperature of the dunes. Reptiles and amphibians, cold-blooded animals, take advantage of this circumstance to set their archaic metabolism in motion, and they frequently can be found in the white sand. However, the heat which favors cold-blooded animals is a deterrent to mammals, and very few enter the sand dunes while the sun is shining. But everything changes at night. An infinite number of footprints demonstrate that hunters have been stalking during the night or simply moving through the sand to enter in one of the corrals, or even further in the ferocious world of the thicket or the marsh. From a biological standpoint, the marsh is the most important area of Doñana, and undoubtedly the most productive, i.e. that which produces the greatest quantity of living matter per unit of time and surface. The floor of the marsh is composed of clayish sediments and becomes inundated every year between autumn and spring by rain and nearby floodwaters. It is thus a system which depends very heavily on water and undergoes season transformations which mark, to a great extent, the rhythm of the entire park. The marsh changes from a lake in wintertime to a fertile meadowland in springtime. Finally, in the summertime, it is converted into a land scorched by the sun and the lack of rain. In one way or another, water is Doñana's lifeblood, and therefore its Achilles' heel. Growing urbanization which draws water from the aquifers and dumping into the rivers which nourish the marshes threaten the conservation of the most important national park in Europe. Life and death are thus summed up in a single word, water. The shores of the Guadalquivir are one of the few places in the park that retain water throughout the dry summer months. The mouth crabs, a species of violinist crab, take advantage of the mud carried down by the river from the Sierra Morena to feed. Although they are usually found in mangrove swamps, the violinist crabs have colonized these shores, multiplying by the thousands. Males have one pincer, which is disproportionately large and white, which they use during courtship to attract females or to dissuade other males from invading their territory. The enormous white pincer is a useful tool in the tiring task of romance and guarding one's territory. But it is the other smaller and functional one which the crab uses to feed itself and dig the holes where it lives. <laughs> 